Elon's obsessed with Shackleton. He talks yeah. about him all the time. He yeah. uses, the, yeah. I, I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. He uses as an example of, the, that is a, as an example of what Mars colonization would be like. He's right. <laughs> no, that Antarctica is as close yeah. to, you can simulate that. Um, the Antarctica is as close to what you could simulate what it would get. That, that Nat Geo series on Mars, I'm not sure if you watched it. It's incredible. Elon's actually in it. Um, and it kind of, and it's like, they get there, everything goes wrong. Somebody dies. Like it's horrible. It, they can't find any water. It's not working. So what, like, what is it? Is it like simulating the experience of what it'd be like yeah. to colonize? So it's like a docu-series where the fictionalized part is the like astronauts on Mars, but then they're interviewing people like Elon Musk and others who are the ones who like paved the way to get to Mars. Right. So this is a really interesting concept. I think it's on Netflix. And yeah, I agree with him 100%, which is that the first guys to make, like, for example, Robert Frost, who uh, uh, went to Australia, well, or, so, sorry, to Antarctica, the British explorer who was beaten to the South Pole three weeks by Robert Amundsen, mm -hmm. he died on the way back. And the reason why is because he wasn't well prepared. He was arrogant. He uh, didn't have the proper amounts of supplies. His team had terrible morale. Antarctica is a brutal place. If you fuck up one time, you die. And it's like, you, and this is what you read a lot about, which is the reason why such heroic characters like Shackleton Shine is a lot of people died. Like there were some people who got frozen in the eye. I mean, man, this again also came to the North exploration. So I read a lot about like the exploration of the North Pole mm -hmm. and same thing. These unextraordinary men take people out into the ice and get frozen out there for years and shit goes so bad. They end up eating each other. They all die. There's the famous, I want, I'm forgetting his name, the British Franklin expedition where they went searching for them for like 20 years. <laughs> and they eventually came across a group of Inuit who were like, oh yeah, we saw some weird white men here like 15 years ago. Yeah. And they find their bones and there's like saw marks which show that they were eating each other. I mean, so history remembers the ones who didn't eat each other. <laughs> yeah, we rem well, yeah, we remember the ones who made it, but there are, uh, and that would be the story of Mars as that well. That will be the story of Mars. So, but and nevertheless, that's the interesting thing yeah. about an Antarctica. Nevertheless, something about human nature drives us to explore it. Yes, that and that seems to be like, you know, a lot of people have this kind of, to me, frustrating conversations. Like, well. Earth is great, man. Why do we need to colonize Mars? Like you just don't get it. It's, yeah. It. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's the same people that say like, "Why are you running? Like, why are you running a marathon? <laughs> what are you running from, man?" Yeah. I don't know. It's pushing the limits of the uh, of the human mind of the of what's possible. It's, it's George like, Mallory because it's there. Yeah. It's simple. Like, and that and that somehow actually the result of that, if you want to be pragmatic about it there's something about pushing that limit that has side effects that you don't expect that will create a better world back home for the people not necessarily on earth but like just in general it raises the quality of life for everybody even though the initial endeavor doesn't make any sense mm -hmm. the very fact of pushing the limits of what's possible then has side effects of uh, benefiting everybody and it's difficult to predict ahead of time what those benefits will be. Say with colonizing Mars, it's unclear what the benefits will be for Earth or in general. Well, with what, struggling... what did we get from the moon? What did we get from Apollo, right? Th technically, and there were a lot of socialists at the time making this argument. They're like, all this money going... You know what? We went to the fucking moon in yeah. 1969. That was amazing. The greatest feat in human history, period. What did we learn from it? We learned in, we learned about interstellar or interplanetary travel. We learned that we could do something off of a device less powerful than the computer in my pocket. Yeah. Like the the amount of potential locked within my pocket and your pocket. I mean, this is if you were to define my politics in one way, it's greatness. Like national a quest for national greatness. There is no greatness without fulfilling the ultimate calling of the human spirit, yeah. which is more. It's not enough. And why should it be? Yeah. It wasn't enough. You know, our ancestors could have been content to sit. Well, actually, many of them were, were content to sit 
and say, these berries will be here for a long time. And they got eaten and they died. And it's the ones who got out and went to the next place and the next place and went across the Siberian land bridge and went across more and it just did extraordinary things. The craziest ones, we are their offspring and we fail them if we don't go into space. That's how I would put it. You should run for president. <laughs> I'm just pro space, man. I love space. No, you're pro yeah. do, doing yeah. difficult things yeah. and pushing, uh, exploring the world in all of its forms. Right. I hope that kind of spirit permeates politics too. That same kind of- uh, Can, can. I, well, it can and yeah. I hope so. I don't know if you want to stay on it, but sure. I think that was book number one or oh, two. Oh, shit, yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right, all right. Um, is there something well, this else? one is a second. This actually is a corollary to that, which is Sapiens. And I know that's a very normal, normy answer. Yeah. Um, one of the best selling books. I think there's a reason for that. Yeah. You've all know Harari. Oh, cool. Okay, look. Yes, he didn't do any new research. I get that. All he did was aggregate. I'm sure he's very controversial in the scientific community. Yeah. But guess what? He wrote a great book. It's a very easy to read general explanation of the rise of human history. And it helps challenge a lot of preconceptions. Are we special? Are we an accident? Are we more like a parasite? Or are we not? What is there a destiny to all of us? I don't know. You know, if anything, it's like what I just described, which is more move, move out. Um, the evolution of money. Like, I know he gets a lot of hate, but I think that he writes it so clearly and well that for your average person to be able to read that, you will come away with a more clear understanding of the human race than before. And I think that that's why it's worth it. I agree with you 100%. I, uh, I'm ashamed to, I usually don't bring up Sapiens because it's like- Yeah, it's like everybody's <laughs> uncle has read it, but it's, yeah. it's, that's a good thing. It's actually. one of, yeah. it is one of the, right. I think it'll be remembered as one of the great books of this particular era. Uh, yeah, because it's it's so clearly it's like the selfish gene with Dawkins. I mean, it mm -hmm. just aggregates so many ideas together and puts language to it that's makes it very useful to talk about. So it is one of the great books. One hundred percent.